Hey guys, this is Dave Van Auken back on the Fight Ass Podcast. We are going to recap such another great weekend in the sport of mixed martial arts. We got UFC Vegas 6, Bellator 243, and Island Fight 63 that we were live in the building for. We got so much to talk about, but first, one of our supporters... Fusion CBD products. Check them out, guys, at FusionCBDProducts.com. Hit them up on the IG. They always got great deals and great sales. Check out our friends and our family at Fusion CBD. All right, here we go. Uh... How is everyone doing out there Sunday night, Monday morning? Uh, let's kick off the week right. Let's kick it off. We are going to do one of the shows. It's rapidly becoming one of my favorites underneath our Fight Bananas banner. It's just uh, me one-on-one with you just literally spilling out my mind, knowledge, opinions, and ideas, of course, about the great weekend of MMA. It's just, guys... If we are not absolutely grateful for what we are seeing on a weekend basis, uh, UFC Vegas 6, Bellator 243, and Island Fight 63 back in the building. So much major announcements going forward through that uh, you know, organization. So, so much. So we're going to kind of work our way backwards, uh, chronological or unchronological. I don't know. We'll, we'll hit on that. Uh, we're going to go UFC Vegas 6, Island Fight 63, and then we're going to end up at Bellator 243. So the first thing I really want to hit on UFC Vegas 6 is, of course, the main event. Let's just get right into it. Right into it. Derek Black Beast Lewis gets a second round TKO on uh, Olenek, who really quickly, if I'm going to drop right now, um, Olenek was getting a lot of sneaky underdog play at the end of the week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it, the steam was going. The train was out there. Multiple people were on that train, betting on that train. Uh, actually, I stayed away on this one. Uh, I always listen to my guys, GK and Aaron the Dog, Inside the Distance podcast. And um, I think they were both on Olenek. I stayed away. But I ain't going to lie, guys. They are on fire. They're hitting 70, 75, 80%. Uh, my two biggest bets of the weekend, one of them was a major... Um, Reason for them, GK was all on it. And the other one was one of my sneaky ones. I love Gavin Tucker all week long. Uh, I made it 135. I said it earlier in the week. I put it on my social media platforms at David Van Auken, and I uh, I cashed in. I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, mommy's going to get a new pair of slippers. You know what I mean? You, you got to take care of her, guys. You got to take care of them. So Derek Lewis gets the win, and... Everything that happens afterwards is what I really want to hit on the most. It's uh, you guys, if you watch, listen to this podcast, you watch the fight. I'm not going to break down the details of what he did with the ground and pound, but let me go into details about what's next. For one, Derek Lewis has now the most knockouts, most TKO finishes in the heavyweight division history. History, guys. Randy Couture, uh, Kane Velasquez, Reem. DC, Stipe, no, no, it's Derek Lewis. So you got to put some respect on the name. Secondly, of course, is his interview. You know, first it was the balls is hot. Now he, he's got to go to the. He's got to take a number two. He's got to go to the bathroom. It's like guys, this man is just absolutely gold on the mic. And talking about gold, what's next for him? Okay. We know this weekend we finally got the trilogy. We got Steep A DC, and I cannot wait to break that down. That's coming out very, very shortly. We got Steep A and DC this weekend. Next, we know we have Francis Nagano. He is sitting on the shelf. Uh, it, it's so blatantly that he is next, regardless if it's Steep A. It'll be Steep A Francis too, or if it's DC, and let's mull it over, guys. He really might put it on the shelf. He might retire, and Francis gets slotted into that fight. He, he's he's already in there. It's the contract signed. So what's next? Who's who would fight Francis on the uh, DC hypothesis? Right? There's two e- easy names. Just, they're just they they jump out at you: Derek Lewis and Curtis Blades. 
They both have a win at the UFC Apex during this pandemic era of the UFC. They're both pretty damn close in the rankings. One of them's got to be next. And I loved how Curtis Blades, how he was aggressive with it. Uh, I, I liked what I saw about it. I saw it uh, all on social media. I called dibs. And man, if you call dibs, he's uh, he's next. You got to respect it. Like It's kind of when you call shotgun. You're with your boys. You're going out there to steak and shake late at night on Friday or Saturday night after the fights. And you yell shotgun inside of the car. You get in the front. So Derek Lewis and Blades should be next. I think it could be a quick spin. October, you know, one of those fight nights in October, maybe, maybe November by the latest. But with Francis Lurkin, you got Stipe DC. This is a great matchup. This The winner after that can sit on ice, can be in that championship match, or can even just wait. You never know. Injuries happen. Like I said, especially if DC wins. If DC wins... The UFC Heavyweight Championship, I believe, will literally be vacant. And now you got Francis and the winner of this, DC Blades. So here we go, guys. Derek Lewis, congratulations, FRM Heavyweight. Most knockouts as a heavyweight ever. And I love that. I love when history, come on, guys. When there's so much great, rich history, Reem, Velasquez, JDS, finishers in the heavyweight division. But Derek Lewis owns the title. Talking about titles, how about Chris Weidman back in the co-main event? Chris Weidman with a unanimous decision win. Um, and I'm going to start this off with earmuffs, guys. If you got kids in the car, you know, whatever, you're, you're listening to this on YouTube, and you, they're around earmuffs. All right, there you go. <laughs> I, I think you got one F-bomb a podcast I can do. I love how Chris Weidman went into this fight. Uh, reporters and, you know, journalists and... They were talking about what, you know, what's next for him. And, uh, you know, is he going to be back in the championship circle? Chris Weidman says, I just need a fucking win. That's it, guys. Come on. He lost five out of his last six. The All-American Chris Weidman, he just needed that W. He just needs to get that momentum going. It didn't matter the name. Didn't matter the, uh, didn't have to be the main event. I thought a co-main event for a card like this is perfect for Weidman. He just needed to win. Uh, I've been really listening to Ray Longo. Ray Longo was on the podcast around six weeks ago. Talked about Chris uh, doing a lot of training with Wonder Boy over there in North Carolina. So just Weidman needed the W, and that's what he did. He got the job done, and uh, he's moving forward. I like it. We'll see what's next for him. Uh, You know, there's a lot of big names out there. I would love to see Weidman even fight. I don't want him in that top five, seven yet. I really don't. You know, people right away, if it's um, Till or Brunson or Hermanson, I would honestly like to see someone behind that. I really would. Maybe like a Gaslam, um, you know, maybe if it's you know, the loser at a Hall, Romero. I don't know if they want to do Romero Weidman too, but we'll, you never know. So great show, like always. Tons of action. Uh, like I said, Gavin Tucker with the win. How about Darush with the spinning back fists? Uh, tons and tons of uh, great UFC stuff. So that was our uh, UFC 240, uh, not 243, Vegas 6. We're about to get to Bellator 243. But first, we are going to check in with Island Fight 63. All right, here we go, guys. Dave Van Auken, Island Fight 63. And I can talk, let's, you know, can we go for days? How, how much time do I got, producer? Do I got an hour here? Uh, it was great. Unbelievable show. Fans back in the building in Pensacola, Florida. It was just tremendous. Dean Tool, uh, the promoter for Island Fights, and now a uh, matchmaker for Icon Fighting Federation. And we'll get into that real soon. Real soon. Holy shit, we'll get into that. Devin Adams, matchmaker on the amateur side. Everyone there, part of the team. You know who you are. Much love. Here we go. Island Fight 63 is kind of reminds me of what's going on when I was trying to think about and talk about it. Kind of what's going on with Tyson and Jones Jr., who has ties, of course, to Island Fights. Right now, the undercard, I know there's a basketball player, a YouTube sensation, and a 56-year-old. Guys, I I don't know about the undercard. 
But Roy Jones and Tyson absolutely has my money. If there's a, a way I can Venmo to him right now for a three dollar discount, I would. I'm getting it. The main event. It's Jones Tyson. I'm getting it. And for Island Fight sixty three. Uh, 15 stacked fights, great highlight moments throughout the night, and we'll, I'll get into them. I will name them names. But with the co-main and then especially that main event, I, I just want to just really drop right now into it. The main event, Cameron Killer Cam Sandoval. You're welcome, my man. Uh, much love. He was on the podcast before. Uh, flew out of Reno, Nevada. Guys, absolute killer killer stud so it was um, Sandoval versus Xander Shank pretty boy and uh, what it, guys this is a pro fight this is a borderline uh, contender series fight both guys humongous features uh, featherweight division be ready Absolute studs. Uh, Shank got the job done by a split decision. I'm not going to lie. And I, I talked to Cam after the fight. I said, dude, keep your damn head up, bro. Stud fight. I, I'm i sitting next to Dean Tool. He, <laughs> he has a little bit of pull. And uh, he was happy with both men. Beyond happy with both men. Impressed by both men. Wanted both men back. Wants to move forward with both men. That's everything, man. That's that's the game. You get an opportunity, and you swing, and you hit a home run. That's the game. Uh, but like I said, split decision. I had Shank winning one in three. The second round was close. Um, I talked to one judge. I talked to actually two out of the three judges after the fight. And I talked to one of the judges that had the win for Sandoval, and they thought Sandoval won one in two. They thought he won the first round. So it was a close fight. It was a great fight. Um, everything. It was a mixed martial arts. We saw submission attempts. We saw wrestling. We saw wrestling defense. We saw great transitions. We saw great stand-up. I'm talking about kicks, knees, spinning back fist, uh, head kicks, jabs. I'm tell- we-, we saw it all in the fight. It was an absolute stunning fight, and uh, I just love what I saw there. And real quick, before I get into the co-main event with SD, guys, a humongous shout-out to Harris Holt Martial Arts. Uh, they came in the building to where Jacob Kilburn is from, Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, we had a nice little breakfast with them, not going to lie. But the guys, the team went 4-0 and undefeated. There's nothing like it. Because even if one loss, you know, it, it's hard to celebrate in that car, in that ride home. And, be like, God, yeah, you know, it's no, he lost. But all four men, big ups to Sage. James, uh, just big up to the whole entire team. I saw a lot of great skills, a lot of great talent. They won in different ways. Uh, some was more aggressive. Some had great wrestling. Some had stand up. The coaching staff, uh, much love to them. Great effing job. And then Jacob Killer Kilburn, um, always good to see him at Island Fights. Literally the Island Fights uh, Hall of Famer, uh, the way maker, the legend killer, Jacob Killer Kilburn. So the main event wraps up great show i think we're gonna see both men back and then we're gonna see both men back fighting professionally soon i would say no later than 2021 talking about professional let's go in the co-main event with sd dumas if you're listening to this right now you have had to see it you have had to see the brutal brutal head kick knockout by sd dumas SD had like a couple uh, opponent changes. This man that he fought 3-0, and drove in from Atlanta, Georgia, um, knocking out people in his regional scene, his little home court. But SD in his amateur um, send-off to the pros, uh, signs with first-round management. Shout-out to Arvello. What a great job. Holy crap, what a great job. SD Dumez was st- striking uh He's so fluid, and I hate I'm I, I I just dislike throwing out these huge names and kind of saddling on them. But guys like Connor and Anderson and Wonder Boy, these beautiful uh, even Till sometimes when Till is a little bit more aggressive because SD is aggressive. 
He's got a great flow. He's just water. And then he'll put the man down. He'll put the man to sleep. That head kick was just phenomenal. It was brutal. And it was great. SD Dumez announced he is heading to the professional side. And he will be fighting September 24th for Icon Fighting Federation live on UFC Fight Pass. I cannot wait. That's what I want to talk about, guys, a little bit for here for a second. Icon Fighting Federation. Um, it's this thing that's been here for a minute. We've been talking about it. Uh, so much stuff behind the scenes. So many things. So many uh, um, just opportunities. It is a brand new fighting organization on UFC Fight Pass. They just don't hand those out. The UFC Fight Pass, they don't just hand that shit out. Icon Fighting Federation um, being matchmade by Dean Tool. I just cannot wait. I, you know, some of the names we've heard on the first card and second, there's a card in September and a card in October. Uh, it, it's going to blow your guys' minds. It, the, the fights, the, the level of fights, it's not just one side. Both men could be in the UFC by the end of the year. Like a number of those fights. So very, very, I'm so excited. That's September 24th, four hours of UFC Fight Pass with Icon Fighting Federation and Roy Jones Boxing. But also a couple last names I really want to shout out here. Island Fight 63. Man, God, what a show. How about Kyle Hamill? Great job there. The great beating Stanley Tippins, the heavyweight. Antonio Benjamin Jr. looking good in the boxing scene. Joe Ham. Remember that name. Joe Ham, undefeated mixed martial artist, great physique, just a beautiful, beautiful, um, kind of like a controlled chaos. He doesn't throw a lot, but when he does, it's clusters. You know what I mean? He kind of just measures up. He finds the opening, and when he goes, he goes. Joe Ham's an absolute stud. I'm telling you, keep your uh, ears out for that. And, of course, last one real quick. Garrett McMahon versus Brendan Thompson. Some of the guys are calling it the fight of the night. I think it may be the fight of the performance of the night was SD. The fight of the night was uh, probably in the main event. But Brandon and uh, Garrett, they went to war. Absolute sick, savage fight. Brandon Thompson was just so uh, active. Um, and the wrestling was, I've never seen him wrestle like that. I've never seen him take his opponent down at will. Uh, trying to pass Throwing down there, very, very active. Brandon Thompson, true grit. Absolute loved him. Uh, great on the mic afterwards. Uh, before the fight afterwards, a lot of love. Limelight going to Brandon Thompson. I want to talk to him real soon. I want to get him on the podcast. He, he is great, good guy, great guy to talk to. I think he'll be good here on the Fight Bananas podcast. All right, so right before we get into Bellator 243, let's thank another one of our supporters, Warhammer Fightwear. Check them out at warhammerfightwear.com or on that Amazon app that you use daily. I know that you do. I check the stock. But guys, go to Warhammer Fightwear. They have some of the best gear in all of mixed martial arts, and especially those leggings for the ladies, an absolute winner for them. And also, guys, I wear that dry fit tee weekly. I love me some Warhammer Fightwear. Check them out at WarhammerFightwear.com. And they got so much more trucker hats, uh, rash guards, a lot of great gear at WarhammerFightwear.com. All right, guys. We are going to end up here in Bellator 243 land. There's really two things I really want to just chit-chat about. First, let's talk about Valerie. Valerie Lareda, uh, 3-0, TKO finish, end of the second round. Loved it. And... God, and this is where I want to go with it. Like I said, I'm not going to break down the fight. I thought she looked phenomenal. Uh, I've known some of the things uh, that was happening in the last, you know, what she talked about on her social media platforms in the last couple of days. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, but the performance was brilliant. I love that she used that super necessary, the dancing, everything. But one thing I want to hit on is I think uh, sometimes when – Girls like Valerie, and let me just throw Paige out there, who is getting very close to what we talked about a month ago on this goddamn show, the Fight Bananas podcast, and we'll break that down very soon. Trust me. Trust me. Um, but, you know, 
guys, they're they're great at fighting, and then also they do all the other stuff too, and that's fine. But people, I think, overlook them or over the, uh, you know underrate them and their skills and how they train and and uh, their cardio and everything like that. Yeah, so they throw a lot of great pictures of themselves on Instagram. Like that's just that's a part of the game, but that doesn't take away from where they're fighting at. It doesn't take away from how hard they're training. You know, Bellator is a professional fight. You know, I argue the second biggest fight organization on this planet. Valerie's three and zero with finishes, guys. Come on, if you if you can't see the talent or if you can't respect what she's doing inside that octagon, that cage, like, just let it go, man. You got to move on. Valerie is a complete stud. She's a star. She's a fighter. And then everything else just comes with it. She's the total package. She is... I know Cyborg's over here. And I know Cyborg's the champion. If Valerie's in the main event on a Friday... And Cyborg's the main event on the Saturday... I bet you people are watching Friday night. Let's jump into the main event. Benson Henderson versus Michael Chandler. Who... uh, Very mysterious uh, with being a free agent. And usually uh, sometimes it's... That doesn't happen, that Bellator will main event with a free agent, and who's next? And Bellator and Michael Chandler just goes hand-in-hand, 34 years young, uh, one of their best champions, you know, in the lightweight division now, just a complete star for him. This was a rematch, and a a lot of people thought it was going 25 minutes. That's what Ben Ben, uh, Henderson usually does. Very quick stoppage in the first. Chandler with this uh, nice little check hook right, boom, puts uh, Ben down. Very, very impressive, Chandler. And, of course, let's, let's move forward. Let's, let's keep this, the uh, dialogue going. What's next for Michael Chandler? Um, I think, I think, and I hope he stays in Bellator. I already, we're hearing a ton of uh, rumors when there's smoke, there's fires of the UFC talk. Uh, I think Gilbert Burns threw it out. I would love to see a Chandler versus Poirier fight. Oh, that would be awesome. And a lot of people are thinking it's got a lot of, mirror-like symptoms of what Eddie Alvarez did, you know, kind of the age and coming over and then, you know, maybe capturing the belt. But we'll see. I personally would love if Chandler stayed in Bellator. I just think uh, he still has a lot of big fights there. He, you know, he's just, he's the heart. He's the pride of Bellator. It's like some guys just, you know, I loved how Derek Jeter stayed a Yankee. I, I like that. To me, I think of Lakers and I think of Kobe Bryant. I think of Magic Johnson. And that's just, I, when I think of Bellator, I do. I think of Michael Chandler, Ryan Bader. Like, Chandler is Bellator. It's just, we, we got to, I hope he stays there. But I hope he goes wherever the money's right. Whoever pays him the most, uh, he deserves it. A hell of a fighter. Great career. And uh, you can see he's not done yet. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the Fight Ass Podcast. Thank you so much for the uh, continued support by Mako Tech Mouthguards. Check them out at Mako Tech, T-E-K underscore Mouthguards. Hit them up on the Instagram page. Great page over there at Mako Tech Mouthguards. Our family at Enstone Nutrition. Use those supplements daily, EnstoNutrition.com. What a great weekend. Um, Derek Lewis and Chris Weidman, Valerie Lareda, S.D. Dumas. Just a great weekend, great moments, great highlight moments. Uh, SD Dumas turning pro September 24th for Icon Fighting Federation. Guys, I'm Dave Van Auken. Thank you. Stay blessed. Stay safe out there. Keep staying bananas.